In this video I will give a very precise explanation of how gold block generators work. Um, kind of a code based explanation. First of all I want to start um, with the update order. I won't go through everything but um, it's just something in the code and I also will link the precise update order. And the category I want to look at in this video are block modification packets. Basically in everything the first thing that happens is Player request get processed, when tile text get processed, when block updates, where there's more stuff in between, but that's kind of a relevant part and I want to look at um, what happens when block modification packets are sent. And block modification packets are basically um, packets with information that the server sends to the client, so the client knows in which states blocks are. Um, because um, update chains get only calculated server side, so if I right click this lever, um, it will flick and it will cause block updates and it will for example update this redstone, this redstone will update more redstone, that will update the rails, when everything will turn on. But this is something that gets only calculated server side, but to able to, uh, but here you can see I can even see that redstone is on. This can only happen if um, the redstone is also on client side and the client doesn't calculate the update chain. The client um, just waits until the block modification packets are sent. So, for example, here, here the lever is a player request. So I process the player request when everything turns on, and within the same game tick, the block modification packets will set be sent. So um, that everything, so that I instantly see within the same game tick that the redstone turned on. However, if we look at categories after the block modification packets. Then something different will happen because if I, for example, use a piston to update something, for example, here um, we have a piston updating a cactus, and then the piston extends with cactus breaks. In this case, what happens is uh, the piston updates the cactus, and we won't be able to see that the cactus is broken until the block modification packets are sent. That only happens in the next tick, so we will go around when we will have stuff happening in between ticks, for example rendering, so we actually see the cactus even though it's already broken, when only in the next tick um, we will actually get the block modification packet that the cactus is broken. And I will use a tick speed mod to slow down the time so we can actually see this. So um, right now there is one tick every 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds at maximum this level should click. And right here you can see there's already the cactus item. And the piston already starts extending, but we can still see the cactus, and this should actually be impossible because the cactus isn't there anymore. And now, um, one game tick passed, and after one game tick, we get the block modification packets, and then the cactus is gone. But um, we did see the cactus um, for one game tick longer than we should have seen him, and that's basically um, what ghost block generators rely on. Um, and this is what you call a uh, one tick desynchronization. So if you um, make any update chain after the block modification packets have already been sent, then uh, we will get a one tick desynchronization because things will stay for one game tick longer than normal. Now there is um, something um, which should be mentioned is that block modification packets only include information about the block ID and the uh, damage value of the block, but what they, for example, do not include is tile entity data. So if I um, have a river goal here and I send a block modification packet to him, then uh, the client won't know um, the tile entity data of the school anymore and will think it's a school without tile entity data, which looks like this. And uh, this is a problem because um, piston animations. Uh, rely on tile entity data because if I extend this piston, then the entire piston animation will rely on the tile entity data of the block 36. And um, for what reason there is additional code that piston extensions and retractions get calculated by both server and client independently. And that is um, the other um, behavior we need to make those blocks. But um, the client doesn't do up update chains. For update chains, he waits just for the server to tell him what's going on, but for piston animations he calculates everything independently and he animates the stuff. And that's everything we need for ghost blocks. So I will just show you um, a very simple uh, um, ghost block generator by test 137E29. Uh, it's simple if you come from the code because this is kind of very close to the code with working 1.8 and 1.9 and I will quickly walk you through how this exactly works. So when you click the lever we will update these two blocks and they will get tile text and I will use stained glass to represent tile text. 
this one will update first and then this one when they finish, so um, this one gets a different color. Then in the next game tick, these will finish where they lay. And I will use stain clay to represent block events because when this repeater finishes its delay, this piston will get a block event. When the other one will finish its delay, and when um, this piston will get a block event. And now that's the tile tick phase. So um, we have finished the tile tick phase, and now the block modification packets get sent, which means that we see that we'll, um, that the repeater and the comparator has turned on. But the block modification packets get sent before the block events, which means that the block events will happen after um, the block modification packets. Which means everything we do after this is um, a one tick desynchronization, except if it's a piston animation, because these get calculated independently by the server and the client. For example, now the first block event will get processed. And in this block event, what will happen is this piston will extend, and this uh, block will um, move over here in form of block 36. And this gets done by both the client and the server. And when this piston extends, he will update blocks around him. And for example, he will update this whale. And this whale will see um, below it is block 36 um, from the piston arm, and block 36 does not have a top, uh, solid top surface, which means the whale will break. Now this is an update chain. This wasn't a piston extension, this was an update chain, which means client side, the whale will stay here until the block um, modification packets are sent, but server side, the whale is already gone. That's the first block event. And now we have already kind of a ghost whale here, because server side is broken and client side it isn't, and when the second block event gets processed. And when the second block event gets processed, the client and the server independently calculate what the piston should be doing. I mean, he extends, of course. Um, server side, there's no whale here, so the piston will just extend and do nothing. But client side, the whale will be pushed over here. Which means we have a desynchronization. Now, this wouldn't be too big of a, of a problem, because um, we have block modification packets, right, which just destroy the desynchronization every tick. But the problem is that this block right here, so a uh, client side this will get pushed over here, and this block didn't change in the tick, which means that this block in here won't receive any block modification packets, which means that um, after we do this, the whale will actually stay in here, and it won't get any block modification packets, because this block didn't change server side. It didn't get marked for anything. So that's basically how this ghost block generator works, and that's also why it needs whale breaking. You can also use carpets, because carpets also break if there's no block with a solid top surface below. And then this also works. There's also a simplified version by the QXQ, which also works in 1.8 and 1.9. But, um, yeah, that's basically the same principle, that this piston gets updated first, extends, breaks the rail server side, but the client side, and then the second piston extends. We can do this with more blocks. This is 1.8 only with trapdoors, because in 1.9 trapdoors won't break anymore when you push away the block behind them. So this is also a ghost block generator which you can use, and then you get ghost blocks here and here. Then you can also use TNT, this works in 1.8 and 1.9. What's important is that you need to power the TNT so it gets destroyed after the block modification packets have been sent. So if you power this by with a repeater, you won't get ghost blocks. Maybe I can show this, but this really makes a difference. So if I do this, then the TNT will just ignite and nothing interesting will happen. If, on the other hand, we power this through a piston, so this piston will extend in the block event phase, when the block modification packets have already been sent, then we will get a ghost block of the TNT. So that's basically this. Now, um, there's something a little bit more complicated. You can also do it with signs and banners. Um, now, the thing to note about signs and banners is that they are unmovable. So they break like, just like rails and trapdoors, but since they are unmovable, it's a little bit um, more difficult, and you need to do a little bit more manipulation. And otherwise, and this block was unnecessary. Um, so I will quickly walk you through this one, and we will have um, a similar concept later also. So when we flick this lever, um, these two will activate. And uh, it doesn't matter in which order they activate, because when this repeater finishes, nothing will happen, actually, except if the repeater turns on, because it will update this piston, but the piston will see the block in front of me is unmovable, therefore he won't schedule a block event. When this repeater finishes, this 
piston will get a block again. And then the block modification packet will be sent before this piston starts acting. When this, when the block events get processed, this block event gets processed, so this block moves away, which means this um, time breaks, but it um, will still be there client side, which means client side where will be an unmovable block here, while server side where will be no block here. So after this piston extended, what he will do is uh, he will break the sign and he will update this piston and this piston. Um, we don't know in which order they update, so they will both get the same play. And um, yeah, when this piston um, extends, he will schedule another block event at this piston. And we need this piston to make the whole thing direction and location independent. Um, because now we have guaranteed that this piston gets uh, his block event after this piston. Now when this piston extends, server side he will just extend because there's no block there. Client side there's a sign there. It means that um, server side he will be an extended piston, but client side he will stay this um, normal um, unextended piston. And then we can um, push it out with a slam block and since there's uh, an extended piston here server side, but an unextended piston here client side, um, he, this block will get pulled over here client side but not server side which means that because of the sign you can generate a ghost block here and that's the way you can generate ghost blocks with unmovable blocks this also works with banners I grab myself a banner here and this also works and we get here a ghost block so that's the basic idea yeah and this works in 1.8 and in 1.9 now we are, uh, I want to show um, some contraptions based on additional behaviors. For example, in 1.8 we have a glitchy piston state, which basically says um, if you retract the piston, so if you have an extended piston and we depower him, then up on the block update he will get into this glitchy piston state. And once the block event gets processed, he will either get converted to block 36 if he's still unpowered, or if he is powered, then up on the block event he will return to this. Now um, the interesting thing is if you use Taltix to de depower this piston, you will get into the glitchy piston state before the block modification packets are sent. Then the block modification packets are sent. And after the block modification packets are sent, we will revert him to this state, which means that for one game tick we will see the piston in his glitchy piston state. And this is one, one tick desynchronization we can use for a ghost block generator. That's very simple and all of that stuff, but that is broken in 1.9 because in 1.9 there's no longer the glitch piston state. Another behavior which we can also use for fully automatic post block generators, uh, which works in 1.9, is based on pistons deleting blocks. So right here I have a normal piston. The normal pistons have a property that when they retract, they delete the block above them. And that's um, so. The reason for that is that uh, they should delete the piston head. Now sticky pistons do something different. Sticky pistons don't just delete the block, they check whether the block two blocks above is movable and if it's movable they won't delete this block, they will replace it with that block. Yeah, that's also very logical so they can move, they can pull the block. Now the interesting thing is that um, when a sticky piston retracts and there's no movable block above, when he will simply do nothing. And he will just retract and that block will stay there. Which means that if you have a sticky piston, like this, if we retract him, then we will get a block for six down here and we will get a piston head up here. And where did the piston head go? I mean, if we retract him, the piston head is gone. The reason the piston head is gone because um, if you update a piston and he's not attached, uh, if you update a piston head and he's not attached to a piston base, he will simply disappear. And this happens through a block update chain. So he receives an up, um, update and then he disappears. Which means we can um, also use this as space for a one tick desynchronization. And here I have a ghost block generator which uses exactly this behavior to generate a ghost block. I will quickly walk you through this one. I think I will need four clay blocks for this one. So um, when we flick this lever, um, the comparator will get um, tile ticks. These will get tile ticks. The first one which updates is this one. So um, this piston gets block event number one. Then after that, um, one of these comparators up, um, updates, but we don't know which one of them updates first. But it doesn't matter because when this comparator turns on, um, it will update this piston and this piston says um, 
I can't extend because there's a piston head in front of here, so he won't schedule a block event. When this one um, updates, when this piston will get a block event, the second one, do that the tactics are out of the way, we can set the block modification packet. Now we start the um, ghost, the, the desynchronized stuff. So first of all, this piston will retract, like a stick piston, and then um, when this piston retracts, we will get kind of a block 36 with a piston head in, on top because you didn't delete this piston as part of a piston extension. So this doesn't work with normal pistons because with normal piston, um, the piston head would be uh, deleted as part of the piston extension, so the client would also delete it. But here, um, the piston head will only get deleted server side, but not client side, which means client side where piston head will stay here. And when this piston retracts, you will also update this piston, so this piston will get the third block event. Then the second block event gets processed, which means that this redstone will go up here, and this one gets the third, uh, fourth block event. Then this piston will try to extend. Server side, you can extend, because there's just air here, but client side, there's still the piston head, which means that um, server side, it will be an extended piston. For client side, it will be a retracted piston, and when we um, activate this piston, and when client side, this piston will be moved over here, while server side, it will stay over here. When we also get these ghost blocks. Um, now, something you might be curious is where we also can get other blocks when just pistons. Of course, we can get other blocks when just pistons. Um, I will just quickly um, improvise that. It wasn't actually planned, but. Um, I just remembered that I got this question a lot, so this will probably be very messy, but you, but you will probably um, be able to get the idea. And I need to be very careful that I don't mess up, <laughs> because otherwise I will have to cut this out. Um, so how do we power this piston? We power this piston like this, maybe. Okay, I, I, I have a plan how I can do this, maybe. Um, I know we want to not want this. Okay, this, this would be the piston setup. So um, our plan is we want to have this piston activated. Um, you can see me do live redstone. Um, we want to retract this piston when we want to push this piston in. And client side that will be successful because um, this pist uh, this block because we I mean client side it won't be successful and this will stay here because there's a piston. End. Server side, the piston head will be gone. So let's see how we can do this in a way that it works. And then we also need to update this piston. So you can probably make the circuit I'm doing right now much more compact than I'm doing it here. But anyway, um, let's see. And there's a reason why you normally don't do live redstone, but Let's see whether this makes any sense. I don't think that this already works, but maybe it does. Well, we need to get some power some in here somehow. So if we do this, then we already duplicated one block, and um, it's not resettable yet. But but that's basically the concept how you can do things. Um, so that's basically uh, the way of you need to think. Um, so the client can do piston extensions. So basically, the client can can't handle anything except his pistons. Pistons are the only thing Clank can do. And that's everything. Bye.